my goal for these next minutes is to help you feel really uneasy in Zion. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. But by and large, I'm persuaded. The evangelical church sings with our words and with our conduct. This world is my home. And here, I'm putting down roots. I'm staking my claim. I love it here. The words of the prophet Amos in chapter 6 are as relevant today as ever when he calls down this divine curse on people who are at ease in Zion. Remember this, woe to those who are at ease in Zion. Woe to those who lie on beds of ivory and stretch themselves out on the couches and eat lambs from the flock and calves from the midst of the stall, who sing idol songs to the sound of the harp who drink wine in bowls and anoint themselves with the finest oils, but are not grieved by the ruin of Joseph. They're looking out on the sin of the land and it doesn't move them. And so many of us, I fear, are whistling while the church in segments is burning. What the church needs and therefore what the world needs is Christians who identify as pilgrims, who feel like sojourners, who exist as exiles on this earth. When people look at us, do they see people gloriously uneasy in the world because we're longing for another? But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. For many of whom I have often told you and now tell you even with tears walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Their God is their belly and they glory in their shame with minds set on earthly things. But, there's a contrast, right? Not like this, but our citizenship is in heaven and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. In essence, he's saying, don't be like those who walk as enemies of the cross of Christ with minds set on earthly things. Be heavenly minded because heaven is your true homeland. That's your true homeland. Therefore, be heavenly minded. This is the example we've given to you. Follow it. You hear Paul saying that. Follow this example, the one that has the aroma of heaven all over it. So I close. Woe to those who are at ease in America, to those who walk as enemies of the cross of Christ with minds set on earthly things. What the church needs, and therefore what the world needs, is Christians who identify as pilgrims, who feel like sojourners, who exist as exiles on this earth, a people gloriously out of step with this world because we're longing for another. Are you longing for another this morning? A people who sing from the heart, let goods and kindred go, this mortal life also. The body they may kill, God's truth abideth still. His kingdom and our citizenship in it is forever.